Hey, it's Sharde at Melon and Milk SD. Hi, I'm Sharde. I'm a doula and lactation consultant, and I am a mom. And I've got five tips on how to calm your baby. It's called the five S's. So I learned this technique called the five S's at several certifications that I've gone through for my work as a perineal health navigator, doula, and lactation consultant. And I've adapted this technique in a way that works for me and for my clients. And I enjoy teaching it to others and helping them learn how to implement this so that they can calm their babies um, quickly and efficiently and effectively in a simple routine that's calming for baby and calming for parent. S number one, shushing. Take it from a trusted source that babies actually don't need to sleep in complete and total silence. White noise and other household um, noises like dishwashers and fans, vacuum cleaners, um, all of those things are actually okay to have going while your baby is sleeping. And in fact, it can actually help your baby sleep a little bit more peacefully. Um, if you remember, you know, in the, in the womb, the sound of the blood flow from the placenta is a shush louder than a vacuum cleaner. And so while not all noises, white noise is created equally, um, hissy fans and ocean sounds and forest sounds, those often fail because they lack the womb's rumbly quality. Um, and so the best way to imitate these sounds is to do things that sound like the womb, white noise, and you can make this noise with your mouth by shushing very audibly into your baby's ear. Shh, shh, shh. And when you get tired of doing that, because you will, there are special sound machines and devices that can mimic this as well. Shh, 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 shh. Number two. Number two is stomach. The back is the safest position for a baby to sleep, but it's the worst position for a baby that's fussy and to calm a fussy baby. So this S can be activated by holding your baby on their stomach or on their side um, or even over your shoulder. So all those S's um, and you'll instantly watch your baby chill out. It's amazing. There's plenty of videos out there that you can check out of people actually doing this technique to get their babies to go to sleep. Um, I often impress my clients when I take their baby and they're like, here, hold my baby for me at a lactation consult and the baby's crying and I, I take the baby like this, I hold the baby, hold the baby this way, between the legs, turn that baby over and they're resting in the forearm here and then the head is in the crook of the elbow and the legs kind of dangle here and you can just pat the back you can just hold them and then we'll get into the next couple things you can do with this position but this side it could they can either be on their side or they can be on their stomach and like we said over the shoulder as well um, all of these things also help to relieve pressure and gas buildup that might be inside trapped inside the baby um, and if they're having some trouble getting it up or getting it down those positions will put some pressure on the belly helping to relieve the gas extra tip number three remember what i said earlier life in the womb is very bouncy it's very swaying um if you remember what it was like to hold your baby in your belly gently bouncing and swaying as you walked or as you rocked as you did exercise we want to imitate that same movement of being carried in the womb while slow rocking is okay to keep the baby asleep fast tiny motions will help soothe the baby more quickly. And we never wanna shake our baby. We always wanna support their head and their neck in everything that we do. And so this little jello jiggle that we call it, it's a movement that should be no more than an inch or so back and forth. And sometimes um, I like to just wear the baby. That's also the simplest way to do this move. Um, you can even get in some really good exercise and some good gentle movement by wearing the baby and doing this. You can keep your hands free, which is awesome to do other things like scroll on Instagram, watch this video on YouTube or feed yourself, take care of yourself. 
Um, baby carriers for newborns are also super helpful to promote bonding, skin to skin, to help keep your baby nice and snug and comfy um, and happy. And so it's a nice gentle sleep session that we did while I talked. That's number four, sucking. Sucking is the icing on the cake of calming. Many fussy babies relax into a deep tranquility when they suck. Um, just think about those milk drunk babies that you've seen in those breastfeeding photos. So many babies calm, you know, much quicker and easier with a little sucking comfort, whether that's a pacifier or a boob. And if you're aware of not overusing it um, and you only use it to calm your baby for a short period of time, um, remove it when they're done. You shouldn't have too much cause for concern. We don't like to introduce the pacifier before the first four weeks, um, just so that we don't have any issues with establishing milk supply. Um, the supply and demand system can be interrupted by a pacifier if you're overusing it, and so we just want to be mindful of that. But if it's something that saves your sanity and your mind and gives you some quiet and some peace and just gives you a little break, by all means, go ahead and use it for a short period of time and just don't rely on it. Finally made it to five. Swaddling. Swaddling. Swaddling recreates a snug feeling like being packed in the, the belly, in that amniotic fluid, in the amniotic sac, warm and cozy. Um, it decreases the moral or the startle reflex that they do with their arms when they flail their arms out and they're, ah. Um, sw swaddling has become somewhat controversial lately on whether you should or you shouldn't swaddle your baby. Um, there's no swaddle that device or blanket that is magically going to help your baby have uninterrupted sleep. Um, so do what's, what works best for you and for your baby. Um, if this doesn't seem to fit or to work well, um, then don't do it. With that being said, and so according to Dr. Harvey Karp, who is a pediatrician, the correct way to swaddle your baby is to wrap the arms nice and snug, straight at the side, you know, but let the hips be loose and flexed. Look, my baby's hips are loose and flexed here. You wanna use a nice square blanket. Um, make sure that you don't cover your baby's head and make sure the swaddle is not too loose, um, but loose enough that you can easily unwrap it. And so your baby shouldn't be swaddled all day just for the fussing periods or the fussy periods. And when your baby is maybe napping, um, and you just want to use it in combination with the other things like so and you have a nice cozy happy baby and wrapped babies respond more quickly to the other four s's and stay soothed for a little bit longer because they can't start a swaddling trick uh, a really cool swaddling trick from a nurse a black nurse at Sharp Mary Birch named Naisha, and she was an amazing nurse. And I'm calling her out because there are not too many amazing black female nurses like her in the labor and delivery unit. Um, and I loved how she helped the family that I was working with as a doula. So love that. There's lots of different swaddle techniques and you can learn them to see what works best for you and your baby. But this is the one that I know. So those are the tips that I have for you on how to calm your baby. And as always, take what you want and leave the rest. And until next time, happy birthing.